Hey guys, welcome back. So we're down here on the farm and the crickets have made it all the way down here. We've got something pretty exciting to show you. This is my old man, Tim, here. Howdy. How are you? And uh, we've got some baby crickets along the way. So let's get into the video. Here we go. All right, welcome back to vlog four. If you watched vlog three, you would have seen that I was weighing guitar competing. So my dad's been looking them up for the last week. I've also come down here this week to, on the farm to look after the crickets, one, but also to help out Dad with harvest. So we've actually just stopped today because it's super hot outside, it's 40 degrees, which is actually perfect for the crickets, but you just can't harvest it, it's too dangerous. So I'll flip the camera around now and I'll show you what we've been doing. Okay, as you can see, we have three boxes going and I'll run you through what all three boxes are doing in a minute. But firstly, because it is so hot today, we won't be needing the three lights anymore. So I'll just quickly switch that off. And if we can get in here real quickly, you can actually see all these crickets just laying eggs. All right, <clears throat> so the three boxes. So my dad, he's been really getting involved with the crickets. He says he's like he doesn't really understand the crickets he doesn't really like looking after them but i can tell that's a lie because he has actually gone to town in this so in this box here we've got some top soil which you can see right here but before that we actually had this normal soil all right so this normal soil is just plain soil that we found on the farm and because we wanted to see if the crickets would still lay their eggs in just normal soil or if we did actually need this top soil and this container here is actually where the pinhead crickets are. So if I zoom in just in here and what I'll do, give this a quick light spray because remember these guys still need moisture and you'll see them all just moving around down in there. Right, so we're gonna give this soil at the back there, which, which was in this container, another 10 to 15 days just to see if any eggs come from it or any little pinhead crickets and if it's do if they do that's awesome um, but I think we're going to keep using the top soil so you guys can keep doing that at home as well because these crickets are going to be laying so many eggs over the next few weeks it's really important to make sure you keep track of like what eggs and what crickets are up to what age so by me having three boxes here, it's fine at the moment, but I'm gonna have to have another one up there on top of the shelf. Now, I'm gonna have to have four boxes that are gonna, all gonna rotate the crickets in and out, making sure I don't have the younger crickets in with the older crickets because these crickets can actually eat the little pinhead crickets if you're not careful. Another thing to remember is actually keeping both these soils nice and damp because the crickets are still need a little bit of moisture, but also be really careful with how much water you spray in the enclosure because if I get in nice and close here, you see that little black dot on the back of the wall just there? Now, that is actually a small pinhead cricket that is drowned because when I was spraying the water in the enclosure, I put too much water in on the walls and especially with the heat lamp up the top here, sucks all the moisture up and onto the walls and they can actually drown if there's too much water in the enclosure, so just be really careful with that. I then thought I'd better put some vermilite down or otherwise known as kitty litter because that's also gonna take away a bit of the moisture and if they do need a drink, they have watermelon and oranges down this corner, so it's perfect. So as you can see, everything behind me, the crickets are going smoothly, can't complain, and I'm really excited for the future. Now, a lot of people have been asking me why have I started the cricket farm? And the reason why I've started the cricket farm is because I believe they're the food of the future. By 2050, the population of the earth is going to be over 9 billion people and right now I'm actually doing a nutrition and exercise science degree and we're looking at food and what is more sustainable and what is going to be a clean, green source of food for the future. Crickets, as well as the cricket flour, is 60% protein, which means it's a great alternative for families instead of having to afford expensive meats like salmon, chicken and steak to feed their families to make sure that they're getting the right nutrition needed for a healthy diet. Crickets are super cheap to maintain, which means the final product, which is cricket flour, is also gonna be really affordable for families here in Australia. Alrighty, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for watching vlog four. Be sure to check out vlog five where I'm gonna give you guys a bit more of an update on how the cricket farm is evolving and how it's growing in size. 
And like I said before, I just really want to have an impact on this earth and I want to try and make it a better place and more affordable for people to have the good nutrition that they need. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.